Hello and welcome to an overview of the results for the chicory trial conducted as a part of the Vancouver Island Winter Vegetable Variety Trial. My name is Raylani. I am a research assistant with the Sustainable Agricultural Landscapes Lab at the University of British Columbia, and I was a project manager on this trial. I want to respectfully acknowledge that this project took place on the unceded and sovereign Indigenous territories within the colonial borders of British Columbia. This trial was a collaboration between the Sustainable Agricultural Landscapes Lab at UBC and eight vegetable growers on Vancouver Island. These vegetable farms were located in five regions that um, reached from the Victoria Langford area to the south to the Comox Valley to the north. We had two primary objectives for this trial. The first was to build capacity for grower participatory variety trials on Vancouver Island, and then also to conduct variety trials and share the results with growers and other interested parties and organizations. We chose two crops for this variety trial um, with grower input, spinach and chicory, and selected seven varieties of each that we thought would perform well in a winter harvest situation, and then selected eight traits to help reflect the project goals that each of the varieties was evaluated on. This was a mother-daughter trial design. So um, we had one site where we had three replicates of each variety grown on, and then on our seven other sites, just one plot of each variety was grown. Each variety was grown in a plot of eight feet long by one bed foot wide, and each of the plots were labeled in the field with flags or stakes, and then paper maps were created to keep track of variety location. Management decisions outside of the varieties themselves and the timing of planting and harvest were decided on a farm by farm basis. This means that irrigation, nutrient amendments, and weed cultivation choices were all made uh, on a farm by farm basis. The chicory were sown into trays and then transplanted. They were sown around the summer solstice, so June 20th through 27th of 2022, and then transplanted out into the field four to six weeks later, July 20th to July 30th. They were transplanted at a 10 to 12 inch in row spacing. The varieties selected for this trial were Beatrice, Etna, Fiero, Leonardo, Paya de Neve, Rosato, and Virtus. The traits that were evaluated were germination, seedling vigor, bolt resistance, disease resistance, winter hardiness, flavor, marketability, and yield. All of these traits were rated on a one to five scale, except for yield, which we measured by weighing the marketable crop biomass in the field. Bolt resistance, disease resistance, and winter hardiness were all evaluated two to three times throughout the growing period, beginning in uh, mid-October through the time of harvest, which was late November or early December. To standardize the ratings across the farms, uh, we used a rubric that detailed each trait and a corresponding metric associated with a one to five rating. The evaluations were conducted by the growers where they assigned the one to five rating for each trait for each variety. They were also encouraged to take photos and provide qualitative commentary about the varieties as they grew in the field. The data was collected through SeedLinked, an online variety trial platform. And then the data itself was analyzed collectively by the Sustainable Agricultural Landscapes Lab team. Yield was measured at the time of harvest in the field by uh, creating a one meter length by one bed width quadrant. And all of the saleable chicory was harvested from this area and weighed. To get an overview, kind of broad scale idea of how these varieties performed in contrast with each other, 
we uh, calculated the cumulative average rating. So this is a simple mean of all of the traits combined. So every evaluation for every trait averaged. And here we can see that Leonardo, Virtus, and Fiero were the top three varieties. When we measured yield, there was a pretty widespread Virtus certainly had the highest yield, followed by Piadenev and then Leonardo, with Etna, Beatrice, and Rosato at the lower end. So I'm going to go through now variety by variety and give a short description of how each of these varieties performed and some of the uh, key findings. So Leonardo was rated the highest overall and ranked the highest in seedling vigor, winter hardiness, and marketability. 100% of the growers said they would grow this chicory again. It's a Rosso di Dicciogia type, so it forms dense kind of cabbage-like heads and has like deep red or maroon leaves with white ribs. This variety withstood light frost without damage and the outer leaves sustained damage that made them unmarketable after hard frost, but when peeled back, there was still a saleable head after hard frost. The winter hardiness of this variety and the consistent heading of this variety um, contributed to a higher yield than Etna, which was the other Rosa di Chiogia type radicchio in this trial. Virtus ranked second highest overall and ranked highest in germination, bull resistance, and yield. So 80% of the growers said they would grow this variety again. This is a sugar loaf type of radicchio that forms romaine-like heads that are light green with uh, white ribs. This variety sustained very little pest damage, um, but performed inconsistently in terms of winter hardiness. There were some reports that this variety did quite well in harder frosts and other reports that uh, many, many layers had to be peeled back because they had frozen after hard frosts and they were left with a very little marketable biomass. Fiero rated um, third overall and ranked highest in disease resistance. However, only 33% of the growers would grow this variety again. This is a Rosso de Trevisio type, which forms upright elongated heads that are maroon with these white green ribs. Really minimal pest damage um, and reasonable winter hardiness with some browning and rotting of outer leaves after hard frost. However, this variety was pretty slow growing. It had poor vigor and was really variable in its appearance and its ability to head, which contributed to the low um, percentage in terms of if growers would grow this variety again. Um, tied for third is Piadenev. 50% of the growers said they would grow this one again. It's a Bianco di Chiogia type, which forms dense cabbage-like heads similar to Leonardo. However, they're green, really minimal pest damage, but variably winter hardy. So again, some conflicting reports that this variety withstood hard frost well and others that said there was significant damage and that many layers of this chicory had to be peeled back for it to be saleable. There's also reports that this variety bolted at least a few plants on a few of the trial sites. Etna was rated fourth overall. 50% of growers would grow this variety again. This is another Rosso di Chiogia type of radicchio similar to Leonardo in its appearance. Minimal pest damage here, but did poorly or worse than um, 
Leonardo in terms of cold or winter hardiness. So the outer leaves browned and rotted with several hard frosts, but there was a, a marketable head if those layers were peeled back most of the time. This variety also had a lower yield in part because of all of the layers that had to be peeled back and also because it was pretty variable in its uh, maturation timing. So not all plants had headed by the time that uh, this was to be harvested. Rosado was rated fifth highest overall. 17% of growers would grow this again. This is a Rosso di Ven Venato type, which is a, it's a pale green chicory that turns a salmon pink color with cold exposure. This forms small, looser heads, uh, really minimal pest damage here reasonably hardy, but this variety didn't consistently head at, by the time that the trial was concluding and harvest was being conducted, which contributed, contributed to its low yield. There also wasn't enough cold weather to turn these the pink color that they were supposed to be, which resulted in kind of um, a sickly in-between color, which contributed to the low ranking or the low percentage of growers who would grow that again between the color itself and the really variable heading, um, there was a low percentage of growers who would grow this again. However, when this variety did turn, the pink color was supposed to be a lot of growers remarked that it was very striking. Beatrice was the lowest rated overall, but ranked highest in flavor. 33% of growers would grow it again. This is a variegato di Castelfranco type, so it's got pale green leaves with burgundy spots. It has an open escrow type habit with a small inner head. And minimal pest damage was sustained by Beatrice. <clears throat> there was some leaf tip browning observed with harder frosts. And with significant cold exposure, the outer leaves and some of the central heads browned and rotted. This variety was also reported to be pretty bolty. This variety bolted more than any of the other varieties um, consistently across regions. If you are interested in more details about this trial, you can contact me for the full report at the email provided here, or you can visit the Sustainable Agricultural Landscapes Lab website. A big thank you to all of the collaborating farmers and the project team, and certainly to our funders.